Welcome to the sixth annual Notes and Words. There is so much to say about children's, I often feel like I don't know where to start. There's the sheer scope of it. We had 243,000 patient visits last year, 50,000 in the ER, some days as many as 200 kids coming through. Everything from the kid who stuck a marble up his sister's nose, to the kid who swallowed a quarter, to the tween who fell off a chairlift, texting probably, to the teens who are um, fighting against uh, leukemia in the oncology ward. Um, children's literally does it all. Uh, there's the research to talk about. There's many, many things that we've created in children's, kind of made in Oakland, if you can imagine the stamp. Um, treatment protocols and actual cures and vaccines um, that are used around the world. And then finally, for me, it's the kind of ethos of the place. It's a place uh, that's more and more rare in America where you get your kids and my kids and the children of Michael Lewis next to the children of a 15-year-old mom who's never been to a restaurant, has never slept in her own bed, and finds a stay at the hospital absolutely rejuvenating. Um, those families all get the exact same world-class care, and it's right down the street, and it's happening right this minute. <laughs> There's a particular group of people uh, that I'd like to honor this year with my reading. The word, which derives from nourish, means attend or administer, Tending is a fitting image, though for me, minister has the right ring to it. Whichever works for you, there are things to be said about nurses. I studied a team of them, Jenna, Michelle, Meg, over several weeks this spring, in and out of my dad's room, as he set his heart right, pointed his soul upward, and listened to the prayer of his own breathing, as my friend Billy Collins put it. These nurse girls, so young or young seeming until they cracked me open with a bit of intuition, rotated my father, swept his hair off his forehead, deconstructed his glorious smile to clean and reset the bold rack of acrylic teeth that took center stage on his face. These girls are dreamboats, lovey. Angels, he whispered of them before he died. We'd seen nurse magic before, he with his radiation gal, Joan, who shared his birthday, me with Catherine at UCSF, whose job it was to fill me with a cherry red chemotherapy, so toxic you can only ever take one course. And I knew nurses from Children's in Oakland. I'd been there with my daughter, who had meningitis, and again with a friend's son after an all-day operation to separate the plates fused in his skull. Later, solo, I went back with a notebook and a pen. I'd gotten curious about something I thought might best be explained to me by a nurse. I waited for my escort in the lobby, staring at the mural behind the check-in. It's a landscape photograph that obeyed the rule of thirds, a principle of composition I'd learned in a one-night seminar at my local lab. The bottom is the city of Oakland, the middle is clouds, and the top third is blue sky. Whoever was in charge of lobby decorations had glued a small wire and mesh butterfly to the image high above the clouds, making me wonder if a creature so fragile could possibly survive at that altitude. I met Sandy first, who'd worked the desk for 47 years and could somehow call everyone darlin or sweetheart without being remotely irritating. Then we ran into Sister Bernice, who'd sat with her arm around me years back while my daughter had a spinal tap and who still had the same sympathetic eyes and the same hairdo, because God loves a bowl cut. <laughs> she introduced me to Betty, whose job it was to help parents bond with their new newborns despite the circumstances. Skin-to-skin -skin contact, she said, changes everything something I'd recently explained in a wholly different context to my 13-year-old daughter. <laughs> you know, Betty said, every parent looks forward to that first bath, but then when the baby comes months early, you can see how scared they are to touch their own child. So we show them how to hold and comfort their baby, and when they finally make contact and the sense of ownership kicks in, it's like a merger happening before your eyes. 
Every summer, a nurse named Pam jumps in. We have a preemies reunion picnic. Apparently, dozens of kids, some of whom weighed less than two pounds at birth, come back to celebrate their hardiness. Pam shows me a photo. She's shaded under the arm of a lanky boy with pimples, size 11 shoes, she brags. The things that happen here, the stuff we see, most people only know from Grey's Anatomy, someone rightly points out. It's humbling, Kim from Oncology says, the way lives change so suddenly, the way families learn to accommodate their new reality. These kids, they become remarkable. They become special. She tells me about Adriana, who just graduated from college. She lived at Children's for months, back-to-back -back bone marrow transplant, transplants to treat lymphoma. After the first one, when her body rejected the new marrow, it was arranged that she would meet Britney Spears. After the big event, big event when the nurses asked her what she thought, Adriana just shrugged. Meh. <laughs> what could this indomitable girl have to possibly learn from, oops, I did it again? <laughs> I asked Kim what's hardest for her. I can manage any wound. It's the emotional stuff that gets me. Every now and then there's a child whose parents are locked up or just gone. And I think maybe I'm the first person to love this kid. The last nurse I talked to was Claire, who runs palliative care like the angels who helped me walk my dad out of this life. About 70 patients, a fraction of a fraction of a percent, die at children's each year because not all diseases have cures. Claire tells me that when they know death is imminent, they move the child to a demedicalized space, a suite in a quiet part of the hospital with no machines, no pick lines or feeding tubes, so parents can see and hold and memorialize their beautiful child untethered. Off-duty nurses come in from home, bringing a poem and sometimes a flower. Claire said more often than not, there comes a point when the child, worn out from years of treatment, is ready. But, and this has been reported in children as young as four, they won't let go until they're sure their parents will be okay. Altruists, Claire called them. I went to children's looking for some value to see if I could find some point in suffering, which there suddenly seems to be so much of. I'm still working out the details but it has something to do with a general softening, a far-reaching clemency that I think Kim described best. Hierarchies are useless. Everyone has their own pain, their own grief and fragilities. Sooner or later, we are all patients. We are all butterflies. So Claire, Betty, Bernice, Jenna, Catherine, Kim, tonight we dedicate the show to you and to all nurses who help us understand and even celebrate the very tricky condition of being human. <laughs>